Hey guys, welcome to uh, our QSOC League Season 5 Finals. So today we'll have, today's video will have the Bok Choy Boys versus the Incarnation. So do you want to, uh, today we have Jenny with me and also Kenneth in the commentary booth. Uh, hey guys, this is Jenny, um, back again with the commentary. So I'm just going to give a bit of a rundown on the players from each team. So for the first team we have the Bok Choy Boys. Um, and we have Josh, I think, who's the team captain. Um, and he's studying secondary education and arts at Macquarie University and third year student. Um, then we have Derek in the team as well. He's studying pharmacy at UCID, a fourth year student. And then we have Galo, who's studying computer science at UCID as well, who is also a fourth year student. So that's the Bok Choy boys. Um, and they're actually doing the first break, so Galo there will be doing the break in the black t-shirt. Then we have the second team, the, um, the Incarnation. Um, in that team we have Jared, who's studying Mechanical Engineering at UNSW, second year student. Then we have Arthur, who's studying Advanced Science at UNSW, first year student. Then we have Patrick, who's studying Computer Science and Advanced Mathematics, and is a fifth year student. Alright, let's get started. That was the first break by Garlo. Yep, so the first match will be between Garlo and Arthur. And in QSOC League, we have um, singles and doubles matches. So each player plays each other player on the other team once. Uh, and we also play three doubles matches with each player playing with each of their teammates once as well. Yeah. First mistake by Garlo there, missing the nine ball just by a bit. Arthur gets a chance on the table. So this is the incarnation, Arthur. Oh, he just dropped his key. Foul. <laughs> a great way to the, to the match. So for those of you who aren't aware how QSOC League works in general, so QSOC League is kind of like any other league where you play for a number of weeks. For us in particular, it's an eight-week season. So the players come on a Monday and play every Monday night um, against other other teams, teams of three. And then we have a finals day, which is today, um, and they play off together. And this is definitely a oh, nice bank there for Arthur. Yes, yes, indeed. Right, so... How the scoring system works, it's a point-based system, so um, in a singles match between two players, each player has the chance to score 10 points to themselves. Um, so each ball is worth one point, and the black or eight ball itself is worth three points. So if you win the game, you technically get 10 points, um, and your opponent gets points um, basically from how many balls they potted as well so for example if Arthur wins the game and Galo pots three of his balls the score will be 10 to 3 Arthur's way and how the entire match works is that all the points from each match is accumulated and whichever team has the most amount of points after all matches have been played will be crowned the winner
What a shot. And let's see how he lands on this April after the shot. Judged to perfection. Oh, oh very well played. Nice, nice recovery. Um, the frame was looking a bit grim for him there, but uh, he pulled through and earned his team ten points. Yep, right. So Patrick just won ten. Uh, Derek won six. So that puts the score to um, thirty-one to twenty. Bok Choy boys away, but the incarnation is catching up. So the next match is between Josh um, from Bok Choy Boys and Jared from the Incarnation and this will be Josh's break. So Kenneth, you have a team in uh, QSOC League this season as well. How did you guys fare? Well, it was a very, very close game. We versed... Um, Leon's team, which is LB? LBs with UBs. LBs with UBs. Well, whatever that means. Poor I believe UBs stands for Ultra Boosts. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, that's a very bad name, guys. Um, but anyways, um, it was a very close match. Uh, we started the match giving them a handicap start. Um, and we lost by two points. Two balls. Very, very close, very close game. Yeah, it was indeed. But uh, it was a good season, it was a good run. Um, both my teammates uh, saw a very big improvement in both their um, thinking strategically and also their potting, etc. So, just very happy for that. So a dry break from Josh there. So Jared with the first chance of getting some points. Don't forget that the incarnation is still at the moment 11 points down. So every point really matters at this point. There we go, one point. <laughs> Actually, um, I just want to point out that for this season, actually, we had a lot of female players in the league um, in the league games this this season. Um, we normally do get quite a few females, but I think this year, this season, we had more females than usual, which is a really good, really good to see. Um, I would really like to see one day there being an all girls team that makes it towards the final. That would be the ultimate goal. So come on, girls. <laughs> so Jenny, you're female. Did you play? Yeah, so I played um, the first four seasons of League and the best season that I did was my first season and my last season. Um, in my last season, we actually, I think, came second in the finals, right? Yeah. Oh, who did you lose to in the final? <laughs> we lost to Kenneth's team in the final. The slide dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a shame. What a shame. <laughs> but yeah, we, we um, came second last, last season, so that was really fun. Oh, I thought, I thought you said you came second last, I was like, oh. No, second last uh, season. <laughs> yeah. Alright, but you, you, you had that pause, you like, came second last, okay, last okay. season. I accept. Your challenge. <laughs> Rolling my eyes, I cannot, but no one can see that. You, you can stand in front of the camera if you want to. <laughs> oh. Um... Overcut it by quite a bit, but fortunately, he pushed it right in front of the eight, which makes it very difficult for Josh to clean it up from here. So, Will, you played Kisop League this season. I did. Yeah. How did you go? Well, in fact, I actually lost to uh, one of the teams that's playing right now, the Incarnation. Um, so. 
This season I played with uh, Jake and David, who started the season as both five handicaps, so kind of our entry level players. But I feel like they have improved drastically throughout the season, and I think that's more rewarding than actually uh, like progressing further into the season. Because I feel like if you're able to provide that learning experience and the, and help kind of players who haven't aren't really integrated into the community to come into the community, I think that's much more rewarding than winning. <laughs> yeah, so we did lose to the Incarnation, so that's they are a very formidable team, and yeah, uh, we'll see how they go in the finals. But that's because Patrick wasn't subbing for them. If Patrick was subbing for them, they wouldn't be formidable. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, um, uh. Patrick is in fact a substitute player for this finals because one of the players had to leave preemptively. Farhad. Farhad. So uh, Patrick is the same handicap as Farhad, so they were able to substitute him for this finals match. Yep. That's a safety shot from Josh there. Um, it's actually pretty good. There's uh, no shot on for. Jared. And again, I guess um, if you're a fairly new player watching these QSOC videos and you feel like everyone that's playing in these videos are very good at pool, do not be discouraged because don't forget that these guys are in the finals. They've knocked out every other team. And we have so many players in the society that are less experienced and are just here for a good time and to learn how to play pool. Let's just have fun with friends. So don't be discouraged from watching these more um, more experienced players um, within the QSOC community in these videos. I think it's worth noting that in our very first season of League, um, one of the teams that made the finals was they were all very low handicap yeah, players. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, because that we have the handicap system in place, it is you, in fact, have a very good chance of making it quite far into the season, even yeah. if you aren't the strongest player. Yeah. I think even in this season, we had a team go seven wins and one loss, and they were all very low handicap players as well. So, we had team substitute go, they were actually the winners of one of the sessions. And so we have two sessions, two, two time slots in the Soccer League. Uh, we usually play on Mondays, and it's usually a 6 to 8 p.m. session, as well as an 8 to 10 p.m. session. So each team plays each team at least once in each session. And the uh, sessions are combined in finals day. So during the finals day, we often have teams who have never played each other and it creates a whole new experience on that day. So Jared's not in the best position for his next shot. But we'll see what he how he handles the situation. I've got a roasted milk tea because I'm about to roast Patrick some more. <laughs> so Jared left uh, quite a safe shot against Josh here. Josh is going to call the 15 in the bottom right hand corner. I believe he's going to try combo. Oh, and he gets it. Great shot.
now I miss the Now it's Jared's turn at the table, and he's he definitely should be worried about the Womble next to the 8. Uh, he's going to have to pull a little bit of a pull a little bit of a good positional shot to be able to shoot that one in. But let's see how he gets around to doing that. So he's quite straight on the four here, so might be it's very difficult for him to be able to shoot this one. What do you think is opting to do here, Will? Uh, I think he might try a safety here but I think considering how many boards there are left on the table I think it's very difficult for him to be able to pull a pull a very safe shot here I think what he did there is just, he just opted to knock out the ball so he's just hoping for a return to the table so he can pot it next time So our uh, pressure is now on Josh to be able to clear the table. Definitely thinking long and hard about uh, how he's going to approach this. Very good shot. Kenneth, what do you think of the, the frame? Well, I'd definitely say that Joss has a very good chance of cleaning up here. Oh, I always jinx it. <laughs> Why do I always jinx it? <laughs> My God. Um, so as long as Jared's not straight on this one ball, he should be able to pull off a very decent positional shot for the 8. Oh. Opted to knock the 8 a bit, I think. It's fine guys, it goes. I think he'll try to cut it into the bottom right hand corner. Hasn't exactly made it the easiest for himself though. How much talent people have these days are playing for. <laughs> like the incarnation, their team is mostly first year and second year students. So, all, all. okay. <laughs> wow. I think the 10 goes though. Yeah, the 10. I think the 10 goes too. I, think I can't he's... really see the angle though, but mm. I think so. Um, yeah, so the incarnation are all basically first year, second year students, second year students as I was introducing at the beginning and I think that when I was in first year or second year, or even now, I don't think I could play as well as these guys do. So, it's really fascinating. I feel like uh, because of our venue, City Heroes, it's um, Q Sports has definitely opened up to a lot more, a much bigger demographic. Thank you. 
In the midst of this intense frame, would you like to talk to us about predictions, Mr. Wilk? Ooh, yeah. So, uh, we've introduced our uh, predictions for this uh, season's QSOC League Finals. And what predictions are is pretty much a way for our players to win prizes even though they haven't progressed too far into the competition. And that's to, and in order to win prizes, you'd have to predict who, correctly predict who would win each match throughout um, the day. And predictions will be open the day or two days before the um, finals day. And so each each player will have the opportunity to pick which team they believe would win each match. And if you gather the most points out of everyone who's predicted, then you go in the running to win a QSOC hoodie, as well as a new QSOC smart wallet that we've released recently. Mm, the QSOC smart wallet is really cute. <laughs> it's like basically that thing that you stick in the back of your phone. Um, it's super practical. I love mm. it. It's quality too. I love coming out with like all these new QSOC merch every time. Mm. So, so as far as predictions for uh, today's competition, um, depending on who wins this match, um, people in the running are Anita Deng and David Yoon and Jake Noble, who are... So depending on who wins, they are... So if the Incarnation wins the match, then Anita Deng will be able to claim the Kusok Kuti prize. And David and Jake are currently tied in points. So if the Bok Choi boys manage to win this match, we'll be awarding the prize to both of them. Tied. Yep. Lucky <laughs> so Kenneth there has stood up um, to check this shot because the two is very close to the eight, just making sure that uh, um, Ga Galo hit the two first. I think there wasn't a problem there. So Kenneth, well, how do you fancy Patrick running out this frame? Um, I can tell you now that he's already lost position, so I don't fancy um, cleaning up this frame. But he can easily play a safety, um, making it very difficult for Galo to steal it off him. I take that all back. <laughs> He is now favourite to win the match. <laughs> <laughs> and I jinxed it once again. <laughs> well, fortunately for Patrick, Why do I always jinx it? fortunately for Patrick, he's left quite a difficult shot for Galo. Oh Very good attempt there. I think this is quite difficult for Patrick too. I, I can't really see from where I'm sitting, but does the 10 go? I believe the 10 does pass the 8. The answer is no. Uh, yeah, awesome. But Patrick can easily prove me wrong. Well. Like I said, it was no. <laughs> 
but as you can see you played a two-way shot so essentially what that is is you're going for a difficult part but you're controlling the cue ball so that will, no matter what you'll end up in a position where it's very difficult for your opponent to put his ball So Patrick doesn't really have a shot on that he can pot, but I believe he will definitely try to play safety here because the two ball is also very difficult to pot for Golo. Not the best safety shot, but the worst. <laughs> Fun fact, Patrick just uh, requested for this frame to be cut out of the recording. Uh, here's your answer, no. <laughs> if you're watching this now, you would know this has not happened. <laughs> What a shot! But he still has a hard shot. I would just like to disclaim now You only that got one shot, do not miss your chance to blow I would just like to disclaim now that none of us here Whoa. are professional Whoa. <laughs> 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 Okay, um, let me start again None of us here are professional pool players um, That's not what QSOC is about um, And Kenneth is a very good player, so is Will um, But yeah, none of us are professional, so don't take our commentary too seriously <laughs> Let's go for a cut. Um, yeah, so what do you think of his shot choice there, Mr. Yuan? Mr. Nine Ball Champion and Snooker Champion. Well, personally, I would not have tried to cut that ball. Oh. Oh, silly mistakes, Pat. It feels so bad. Alright, well now the score is... So Carlo has won 10, so Patrick has basically conceded that game. So uh, Carlo has won 10 points, and Patrick has won 6 points, and that brings the score to 51 to 33 Bok Choi boys away. So Bok Choi boys, um, they have a significant lead. But like I said Jared, earlier, most great. of the points come from the doubles match towards the end, so anything can happen. Uh, to continue what I was saying earlier, um, I definitely would not have tried to cut that shot, but that's uh, prim that's primarily because I am more I'm more comfortable with banking the shot, um, and I also feel like it would have left the uh, cue ball in a much safer position relative to where it would land up. I'm sure there is only one man in this world that I know would that would actually go for that cut, and that, my sir, is. Mr. Chris Dam, but even then, I'm sure he would have went for the bank. <laughs> yes. I think the bank is actually a much higher percentage shot, but um, if you are a if you are just starting out playing, uh, it is very difficult for you to visualize where the ball will travel in the bank. So it's it's understandable that you are not not. Uh, the highest skill level players would go for the cut because at least you know where to aim on the ball. But, yeah. Um, the whole point of League is that it's a learning experience and these things will come eventually as the more you play. So 
So now we're off to our fifth singles match between Derek Choi and Jared, who is breaking at the moment. So if you if you discount the handicap given at the start of the match, the scores are actually tied. But because the incarnation had to concede 18 points as a head start, they are currently 18 points in front. The Bok Choi boys are currently 18 points in front. So. So Jared is taking out the rest to shoot the 7 ball and has landed not in the best position. Uh, I think he'll opt to shoot the 3 ball if the 5 doesn't go into the side here. Very nicely done. Um, I think his only option at the moment is to shoot this temple. I think it is the most logical shot at the moment. And he'll probably try to play for the 14 after that. Because he'll go one row. Or not. <laughs> or he'll play for the short side and play the 9 down the corner. Actually very nice on the 9 mm. to just stun across with the 13. But not the easiest shot on the 9 though. It is a good angle but you have to worry about the pot first. I think he's trying to shoot the 13 here actually. Ooh, very nice shot. Fire out these plays. <laughs> You're, you're just not talented, Jenny. I know. Good. Okay. I'll just go away now. Why are you still here? <laughs> so now it's Jared's turn up on the table. And... He's definitely feeling the pressure to the clean pressure. this. Anyway, so um, he's going for. Ooh. Very, very, <laughs> very close. Very close. If he caught the wrong edge of the cue ball there, definitely would have gone into the pocket but just hit just enough of the cushion for it to bounce off. Well, that's because he obviously had way more control than that. Crucial. 
crucial mistake. shot and despite the nine being over very close to the side pocket here I believe he was try to shoot it up into the corner pocket to get better position for the eight ball wow great shot far out that's just wow <laughs> it's just so fascinating very well played by Derek in that frame. Um, so now Derek has won his team six points. Um, ten. Sorry, ten points. Um, and Jared has won his team. by so much I feel like they they would definitely offer the pressure um, and hopefully that doesn't cloud their judgment and hope helps them focus instead because right now it's definitely a mental game for them but this is the good thing about it being a team setting because you guys as a team should be encouraging each other helping each other stay focused helping each other feel motivated um, that's the good thing about the league um, event. I want to say good team spirit, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I feel like teams with good team spirit definitely uh, go further into the competition. Yeah. And it's just building that general uh, atmosphere of cohesiveness within your team yeah. uh, definitely, trust. De definitely goes a long way uh, in, in this game, more so than some, some other uh, cooperative games. Probably try to shoot the 14 because it is. The 14 does go. I think he's looking at the 13 though. Landed nicely on the 15. So Arthur's definitely looking in a good position in this frame. going for the 14 early I think he's made it a lot more difficult for himself um, to position for the 14 from these two balls but we'll see how he plays it oh, oh, landed perfectly very small window but he was able to make it work question is did he play for us? This is for the break and run, right? That's correct. So, he's playing against Josh, who has yet to have a shot on the table. And Arthur's looking to be able to break and run. Oh. 
So our first break and run of this match goes to Arthur. Very nice. And that definitely helps his team's effort in catching up in the point difference. So our next Garlo? match will be against Garlo, Garlo and Garlo. Jared. Oh, Jared, Jared. And it will be Garlo's break. Definitely try to break out the two four. Um, they're the only problem for Gala right now. Um, but he's opting to get rid of the six first to try break out the two four. Um, yeah, um, it's a much lower percentage of a shot. Um, but yeah. As you can see there, he only missed the bite a tiny bit.
we didn't just been concentrating on watching them play for the last seven um, Missed there on the 15. Give Scala another chance at the table, but um, this doesn't really seem like there's a shot that he can play except for the three in the corner. Um, so I guess he's probably going to go for that. He's looking at it. Um, I guess the trick would be how he's going to break over the two and four. That's his problem. Um, He's going to go for the five now and try to break out the two and the four, but it's, it's quite a four, I think. Um, for a safety. Is it safe? It's not really safe, just a miss. Okay, so Jared's back on the table. He's got some problem boards there too. The 11 and 10 are tied up together. There is quite close to the two and four, so there's not many on. So there you go, solved one of the problems kind of broke <laughs> open the 11 and 10, but seems like it's going back to where it was. No, really, that's fine. I think that's fine. That's quite much not, not the easiest shot, but I think it's it's definitely better than where it was before. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the 13 there is still a bit of a problem as well. It's a problem for both players. They're really from top to go. There are not many pockets that are open. Um, not many shots that they can take and Jared actually has a bit of difficulty now as well in terms of where he left the cue ball um, it's very close to the five um, which makes his bridging potentially a bit awkward he has to do a bit of a high bridge there um, where his hands are a bit wobbly just a little bit there you go yep. yeah and as a result as a result he's missed the ball completely and yep. conceded a foul yep so never yeah those are my those are the hardest for me as well. I don't like high bridging. I definitely lose a bit of control. Mm. So I feel his pain there. Mm. Definitely because um, I feel like when you when you're playing pool, just, if, if you're just ha having playing a bit of fun, uh, you never really practice those high bridge shots, especially if you're just taking shots on a table. Yeah. So it is very awkward for most players. It's very it's very uncommon for people to be practicing a high bridge shots on a table. <laughs> Yeah, you always never say that. Yes. It's not one of those techniques that people focus on very much. Yeah. Um, so and Dalo there was looking at trying to break out the two and four with his ball in hand, but ultimately decided to go for the five instead. Um, I think he was hoping to be able to go one rail to hit into the two and four. I think that's what he was thinking, but um, didn't work out. And he has now scratched and conceded a foul back to Jared. I think Jared is now going to try hit out his problem ball. Um, it's very close there to the four, so there's a chance of a foul. Um, just have someone watch that for shot. Yep, seems to be fine. Okay, so now Galo definitely can't keep avoiding his problem balls. He's definitely going to have to do something about them. Um, and you can tell by his expression that, <laughs> that he doesn't really know exactly. Oh, now he does. He's going to play the four in the bottom. Oh. That's close, very close. Mm. And hasn't really left Jared in a very easy position to play any of his remaining balls. Mm. Very fortunate there. This has turned out to be quite a tricky frame for both players. Both players have problem balls. So, so let's see what Jairo does now. So foul there by Jairo. So they're both actually making a lot of fouls in this, uh, this particular game. Um, passing the fouls back and forth between each other. Mm. The end sequence of this frame is really scrappy. Um, they're just kind of pointing one ball at a time and 
a lot of problems to be dealt with. Yeah. I think the issue with this is obviously um, I'm not a very strong player, so I'm not def I'm definitely not one to talk. But I think the issue here is that they both didn't really deal with the problem balls at the start. They both kind of just like avoided the problem and left it towards the end, which is the reason why the end is a bit choppy because they're both just trying to solve their problem balls one board at a time at the end. Um, but nicely played by Garlo. A look of relief on his face. <laughs> uh, <two more> left. <laughs> So Gallo just won his team 10 points, much needed for the Incarnation, sorry, for the Bakhtua boys. And so the Bakhtua boys are now 72 points um, and the Incarnation has 51 points. So quite a significant difference there, 21 points difference. Nation really matters. Um, and this particular game is between Derek from Bok Choy Boys, who is breaking um, another table right now, and Arthur from the Incarnation. coming from a break and run uh, <laughs> feeling a little bit confident I would say in the middle is not looking too good at the moment. So Derek is going to go for 9 here. Um, if I were him I would try to break up that cluster a little bit now but maybe not. I think you observed <laughs> that um, the angle wasn't the best for him to break out that cluster and I think he'll try to do it in this shot here on the 11. Has scratched, unfortunately. So now Arthur has ball in hand. Oh, interesting shot choice there. So I think he's going to leave himself at two. Do you I think. think there's a little bit of an angle for him to be able to break this pack out. He hasn't gone for it either. Has opted not to go into the pack there. See a lot of um, patterns at the moment in the sense that all players seem to be kind of avoiding their problem balls towards and not dealing with them until towards the end. Um, I mean, there could be strategic reason for that. Maybe they're waiting for their opponent to break on the problem ball. Um, but I think it's also quite risky because it doesn't give you much control of the table. Yeah. <laughs> and you're kind of trying to play around that. So 
So a lot of problem balls stuck in the middle there. Um, not looking good for strikes. Um, I mean, Solids at least has the three ball. Um, as long as you get a good angle. Ooh, okay. Well, that splits. Splits the 15 out a little. Um, actually, quite lucky because the 15 is now actually blocking the three and the seven. Um, so. Arka does have some work to do. It was a good shot, but position wise, um, he's not on anything. Um, so he's opting to split it, but it does not split the three and the seven. He actually just did his opponent a favor. So I think in that, uh, that scenario, thought that should have um, in the sense that I guess in the critical moments like this definitely try and not give your opponent an advantage over yourself um, <laughs> just return the favor so Derek has just scratched and given Arthur four in hand but both, all teams are playing incredibly well under pressure Shout out to Ronnie O'Sullivan.
is Josh's break, the last singles game in this match. Um, after this, we'll be going to the doubles games. All right. So Josh has potted uh, one solid on his break. The ball's in his court. No, Jenny, there is no courts in this game. We're just going to ignore Kenneth here um, and proceed with the game. <laughs> I guess Jenny here would say that the ball is no longer in his court. Uh, and the ball is definitely within Patrick's court. <laughs> Patrick has opted for stripes. Patrick has been playing really well throughout this day, actually. He plays with it all the time, actually. <laughs> that was really easy natural position for Pat. She played really simple um, natural angles. There's actually a very good pattern here. It's 11, then the 9, then the 10, then the 14, then black. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's what Patrick is going for. My heart is pounding for him. It's okay, every point um, counts at this point. Pat, bit of advice. Uh, take your time, man. What are you, what are you, what are you doing, man? Alright, you, you rushed that, so you rushed into that. Yeah, like he said, should have got that. He said it himself. I literally just heard him say it. <laughs> yeah, I heard him say it. <laughs> I guess the um, moral of that story is definitely take your time with the eight ball, with any shot really, um, and don't rush anything. Ooh. All right, this seems to be, this shouldn't be a problem for Pat, I don't think, but I don't want to say it in case I jinx it. Shot? Yeah. <laughs> a great shot. So, that match against Patrick and Josh will conclude the singles matchups for this match. Yep. And Bok Choy boys go into the doubles leading by nine points. Yep, 80 to 71. So now we're going to have our first doubles match. Um, the doubles match matches are worth double the points, yep. which means that if you win or if your team wins that doubles match, then you win 20 points as opposed to just 10. So the first matchup if for, is Carlo and Derek from Bok Choy Boys and Jared and Arthur from The Incarnation and we have Derek's break. The boys are breaking out the magic rack. Have they always been using the magic rack? Uh, no. Um, they, haven't, they haven't used it consistently throughout this match. Alright. No. I think it's only been... Right here. Okay, so the doubles matches are um, a scotch doubles format, so players take turns in taking their shots, um, and it's all about teamwork and knowing your teammate and communicating with your teammate in the sense that um, you're both on the same page in terms of what you guys want to achieve. Just, just want to clear up a rumour, um, the magic rack is actually not made of magic, it's actually made of plastic. 
thanks for clearing that up, Kenneth. I'm sure the majority of our audience was confused. Thanks, Kenneth. Your input today has been invaluable. That's okay. what, what I'm here for. Alright. Derek's break. You see? Okay, he got five. And so Scotch format, so his teammate Garlow is now up taking the next shot. And essentially what they'll be trying to do is position for each other. Um, and being conscious of each other's um, strong points and weak points in the game. Alright, so... E, not sure what happened there. Galo made a bit of a mistake. Um, missed the three by quite a bit. Gives Arthur and Jared a chance at the table. For the doubles match, we have a shot clock on each shot. Of so 40 seconds each shot, but each player, um, so in each match, each team has one extension, and they have, in fact, one doubles timeout across the three doubles matches as well. So you can see that um, both players are communicating with each other to see which the preferences each player prefers. So the so their partner knows how to play to their partner's um, strengths. So communication is definitely key in 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 this uh, format. And the doubles um, games are really where you see the teamwork pulling through in the Kisok League format with the three bad team system. Alrighty. Well. Um, very good job from Arthur there to not give away the foul. He had to masse around the 14 to, I think, pretty sure he was hoping to pop the seven as well. But unfortunately, what he did was he actually broke out all the balls for, the, for his opponent. So, Derek and Galo now have a decent chance at getting a few extra points. Why do I always jinx it? <laughs> and actually I made an interesting observation earlier. So in this um, match, most of the players are playing with house cues which is actually quite um, rare to see in finals because the players that tend to get into finals tend to be more um, serious players in a way. Uh, they take the game more seriously so they have their own equipment. But looking around, most of these guys are playing with house cues with the exception, I believe, of Arthur. Um, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, just Arthur. Just Arthur at the moment has his own equipment. Everyone else is playing with house cues and they're all playing incredibly well, um, which goes to show that it's definitely not the equipment, it's the player. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. And I guess it is quite fortunate that um, these teams did end up, these teams without their own cues did end up in the finals because as a prize for first place, we in fact give away three cues to the winning team. Yeah. So. By the end of this, um, they will have their own equipment. They'll, they will have their own equipment. Exactly. Yeah. Good to see. So we actually get this question quite a bit sometimes as well from um, new players who want to get a bit more serious. They often ask. Um, should I be buying my own queue and if so, what queue should I be buying? Um, and I think the answer to that is you don't necessarily need your own queue to um, start getting more serious 
um, for pool if you did want to do that. Um, it's not necessary. Um, if you do feel like you'd be more comfortable having stable equipment that's your own, then by all means go for that. But it's not necessary to get really expensive start to start, I think. Um, I think Fury is often a, a favorite in terms of a starting queue. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Even players who've been playing for a long time who don't have their own equipment can perform very well in our competitions. Yeah. For example, Patrick has been playing for quite a number of years yeah. in QSOC and he has not yet purchased his own queue. Yeah. He's been using house queues the whole time and he's made um, he's made finals of some competitions. Yeah. So Definitely the player, not the queue. Yeah. Right, so um, considering where the balls are, Arthur and Jared are probably the favourites to win this. Oh, very good shot. Well, where would he land? Mm. Doesn't have the best shot on either one of his balls. Yes, yes, definitely agree with you there. Um, he's opting to go for the bank. bank. Put a, bit, a little bit too much bottom on that and Foul. went into the pocket. Giving a good chance to Derek Angalo. Yep, so the only problem I see here is the 15 ball. Uh, it only, the only easy pocket he goes into is the one in the right hand side. Um, so I think they're opting to shoot it in the corner in fact. So no, 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 the side, the side, the side. They're shooting it in the side. So you're just going to roll it into the side, then naturally on the 14, into the other side. Oh, uh, I'm going to hit that a little. I would have... Definitely would have uh, wanted to be more straight in onto the 14. Yeah. So the ball, the cue ball would not move as much after putting the 14. Yeah. So he gets a better position for the 9 ball. Yeah, so now but Derek has to cut this 14 in and try to hold for the 9. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's not too bad. Um, so Gala will have a shot here, but um, has quite a bit of distance on this shot, which definitely makes uh, the shot much harder. Like just, so... Just overcuts it. And that's the situation. Right, so Arthur and Jared with one more chance on the table to try to clinch this and steal it off. Derek and Gallo. Oh, very good shot. Very good shot from Jared there. Pot that in clean. Just barely misses the scratch on that shot. Very fortunate there. <laughs> and Jaren Arthur clinch the first doubles frame. That was crucial for them um, to catch up. And as we were saying, the doubles frames is where it really all counts. So Jared and Arthur just won their team 20 points and Gallo and Derek won 12. And that really evens at the scores because now it's 92 to 91. Um, Buck Choi boys up only one point. So it's pretty much even now. Yeah. Yep. Essentially, one point is is less than one ball at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, it won't be a tie. That's true. 
Yeah, so um, because the score difference is one, an odd number, and because Scotch doubles can only give you even number scores, it is actually impossible to tie. Yep, we've eliminated the possibility of a tie. Which is, in a way, a good thing. Yep. A very good thing. Um, so, good luck to both teams. It's very intense now. Yep. Um, Scotch doubles, two left, two more matches. First one is Galo and Josh versus Jared and Patrick. With Patrick first to break, and here we go. Um. That, that looks like a very familiar rack. <laughs> so not the best break there, but um, Patrick did still manage to pot the three. Um, and so his teammate Jared is up on the table. I think he's going to go for the five. So Patrick, um, I believe, is going for the four in the middle pocket. I'm going to leave his opponent the one. But the six and the two there are definitely a problem um, situation for them. They definitely need to solve that ASAP, I would say, because there's not that many shots left after the one and the, the seven. Now would be the time for Patrick to try and break out the problem boards, otherwise they're not really going to have an extra... Oh, nicely done by Patrick! <laughs> but uh, unfortunately not much of a shot for his, opponent, uh, for his teammate. Um, a bit difficult for them there. But still broke out the problem boards, which is definitely a bonus. Good attempt there by Jared, but he fouled. What was the foul? Can you, sorry, I didn't um, see. So as you can see there, when he actually shot the six and when he lifted his cue, his cue flicked the fourteen. So you saw the fourteen actually move. Um, if he, because of the way he cut at the six, the fourteen should not move right at all. Um, so the fact that the fourteen moved just proved that. Um, something else touched the 14 and it definitely wasn't the cue ball. Yeah. Okay, so Bok Choi boys are at the table. So once again, um, leaving the problem balls to for leaving the problem balls for their final board to solve. Um, usually not the best tactic because if you run out of position of that last ball, then it's very difficult for you to recover. I actually will the 14 13 combo. I think is on. Do you reckon that's what they're going to go for? No, they're going for 11. Yeah. So I think Galo there actually tried to break out um, <laughs> the 14 and 15, but didn't. And so the alternative is, well, really a safety. Mastery by Josh. <laughs> so that has left Patrick in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> yeah, so Patrick. <laughs> it's actually really hard to get out of this one, I think. Um, but Patrick has caught that bottom pocket gonna go one rail I believe. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that was so risky. <laughs> So it was a foul there by Pat because he touched the eight first as opposed to his own balls. And Garlo is now going to go for the 14, push it forward a little bit, leave the 13 for Josh. And Josh is going to leave the cue ball down on the bottom rail for the eight. So really simple natural positioning by Bok Choy boys there. Should be an easy win. <laughs> All right, so the incarnation back at the table. <laughs> I think uh, incarnation is definitely in control of this game at the moment. Um, they can definitely opt to play a really good safety on this shot. And a ball is not in the most ideal position on the table for them to for them to play their next shot. It's just up to them to recognize that. Shot, good shot. It's a great shot. Beautiful safety there uh, by the incarnation. So Josh is feeling the pressure. So Josh is looking for the one rail kick into the bottom left hand pocket. Not very difficult shot here. The black has a far way to travel, so it definitely has to aim it fairly well. That was not. Um... I definitely think uh, the kick the other direction would have been a much better choice um, because the object ball would have a much shorter route to travel to the pocket, and it's a lot easier to aim where the cue ball is going as opposed to the object. Ball. So the incarnation still has two balls left on the table, the six and the two. Um, Patrick is going to go for the six there and leave it on the far. Um, okay. So I think Patrick missed his position there. Um, didn't leave a particularly easy, easy angle for his teammate, uh, but it's not impossible. Um, it's definitely still a shot that can be made. All right. All right. So this shouldn't be too difficult for Galo, yep. but I don't want to jinx it again, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Galo has a chance to redeem himself for missing that first black. Oh! Hey, you know what they say? Third time's a charm, but <laughs> will he get the third chance? <laughs> My guess here is no will. How about you? Uh, I do not fancy Jared missing this early. Um, just well, he's just gotta be careful that he doesn't scratch here. Um, don't think he will. Oh! Oh! oh my god! Clip that! Clip that! <laughs> <laughs> that was cutting it far too close. I literally was like, gotta watch out for this match, and he really challenged me there. So it's a five ball game. So because the difference is less than six points, which is the, which is the closest possible margin of victory, that means that the winner of this final frame will win the entire match, regardless of how many balls each team pots. Yep. And so now the score is just for yeah. clarity's sake 106 to 111 for the first time in this entire match the incarnation is in the lead so this is exactly what we were saying before earlier that all the points um really matter towards the double so even though the bok Choy boys were in the lead in the entire singles matches um, because of how the doubles are playing out the incarnation has taken the lead now this is super clutch this is definitely <laughs> the closest finals we've had yeah uh, do you think so i don't know i it believe much that closer between me and uh jenny's uh 
Yeah, last last season between Kenneth's team and my team in the finals, I think that was pretty close. We didn't need to play the last one. But I gotta say, when when the matches are this close, you know that the handicaps handicap system is pretty much working. So a good start for Bok Choy boys. Able to put a ball on the break. Um, yep, yeah, so there's only two shots available for Josh here. Um, it's the cut on the two down rail to the left hand top corner pocket or the five. Um, personally, I probably would have go for the five. I would go for the five here instead of the two because landing on the five with good position is much more difficult than getting on the two with good position. Um, but yeah, uh, turnover since uh, Josh did miss that shot. So chance for... Arthur and Pat to do their thing and win the entire match. But considering where stripes are, um, I don't really fancy um, their chance here. Cut. Alrighty. Maha, I am not very good at handling. Um, <laughs> watching finals like this because I kind of root for everybody <laughs> yeah. and I get nervous for everyone so that was an amazing cut by Patrick um, They're looking at the 10 from my angle. I can't actually really see how the 10 and 8 are. Um, is there a risk that we can hit the bump the 8 when going for the 10? Um, I think there might be. Um, it's on the other side. I can't really see that shot too clearly. because he created a problem there for his opponent the two and the three but I guess they could always com combo that uh, it's very difficult to see from our angle but um, I think it's definitely possible if, if it is straight in then yeah. definitely not as good yeah. oh, great shot Ooh. it was a great shot but hasn't really left his teammate with a very solid position, which will make it a bit difficult for Josh to play his next shot. They can't, I believe, from where I'm sitting, I don't think they can see the three. Um, and they definitely can't see the one. I don't know if they can see the five from where I'm sitting. I have a feeling they can't, otherwise Josh wouldn't be measuring up that angle. So Josh has just called his extension because we do have a shot clock and he's run out of his usual shot clock of 40 seconds and he has had to call an extension for that shot. 
So Josh there has missed entirely and has left ball in hand for Arthur. All right, so the teammates are communicating there. Um, yeah, I think 11 is probably the wise choice so they can break out that problem because there's not many pockets available for the 11. So they're going to hit the 11 right up. Not optimal because now the 11's against the rail. <laughs> Pressure's on for the players. Okay, I see this being not too difficult for the Boxer boys. Going for the combo, three um, into the two. Uh. Hasn't left Derek with the best shot, but not the worst either. The I think he can either. definitely cut in the three. It's just a bit of a challenging shot, but doable. I think the That's hasn't kind of given Patrick much either. Yeah, <laughs> it might be a, uh, a bit awkward queuing for the fourteen and. Fair distance for his other two balls. Yeah, he's and the 15 is just not an option. <laughs> <laughs> so, just an update. It is now 6:04 p.m. The players have been here since 9 a.m., so they have had a nine-hour day so far. Takes a lot of stamina to play. <laughs> So they went for a safety there, a positional safety. Um, Vicious shot by Josh just then. Right. Arthur's opting to shoot the 15 in the top right hand corner. Ooh. And unfortunately, scratches there. Critical times right now. Um, Definitely <laughs> the best opportunity for the Bok Choy boys so far in this frame. Yeah. And they really have to plan carefully, uh, especially for the eight ball, mm. in order for them to clinch this frame yeah. and the match. Because there's limited options for the eight ball actually. All right, so. That was quite simple natural positioning back for the five. Um, should be fairly simple from here. Great shot. I think this will be it actually. My feeling is that Nerves this will be steel. it. My feeling. <laughs> this is quiet. Yeah! So congratulations to the Bok Choy boys for winning that. Um, they are the first team in all five seasons to win both the minor premiership. Um, so coming first place in the ladder for the eight weeks and the finals. So that is um, history in the making. Um, congratulations to uh, Galo, Derek and Josh. And the final score is... 100. Oh. Um, sorry, just been a bit of a miscalculation in the final score. I'll uh, we'll fix it up right now and I'll let you know the final score. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, nice one. It is 126 
to 117. Bok Choi boys away. Very close match. Good job to all players. Congratulations once again to Josh, Derek and Garlo from Bok Choi boys for coming first place in the QSOC League Finals and to Arthur, Patrick and Jared for coming second. Thanks all. Thanks everyone for watching and be and make sure to <laughs> make sure to keep following our YouTube channel and keep your eyes peeled for our future events especially the next league season we encourage everyone to play see you next time bye